In this video, we're going to do an example of Gauss's law with negative charge instead of positive charge. So let's say I have a point charge of charge minus Q at, I'll say, the origin, and I want to find the electric field at some distance R away from that point charge. So I can use Gauss's law to do this because the problem has symmetry. In particular, it has spherical symmetry. So every distance r away from the point charge will have the same magnitude of the electric field. And so I can use Gauss's law. And remember that Gauss's law says that the en enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught is equal to the electric flux. And so all we need to do is we need to find the enclosed charge and find the electric flux, set them equal to each other, and we can find the electric field. And so let's start with the enclosed charge. So because this is a point charge, no matter how big I make my sphere around the charge, it's going to have the same enclosed charge. So in this case, my enclosed charge is just equal to the point charge, which I've said is minus Q. So that was pretty straightforward. Now, what about the electric flux? So we know that we calculate this by taking the surface integral, so the integral over the area of my Gaussian surface, of the electric field dotted with the area vector, dA. Now for a sphere, dA is always pointing outwards, or in general, dA is always pointing out of the sphere. But for a sphere, that happens to be radially away from the center of the sphere. So it's always pointing straight out. And let's, let's there we go, dA. But what about the electric field? And if, if you wanted to write down dA, you could say that dA was equal to r hat, so it's pointing out in the radial direction, times dA. But what about the electric field? Uh, what direction is, is it pointing? Well, let's, we're going to do this problem two different ways. So first, let's assume that it's pointing outward. So it's, it's got to have some spherical symmetry. So we expect that the electric field will probably either be pointing outward or it'll be pointing inward. And let's say that we're not sure. Now, I happen to know that for negative charges, the electric field always points inward. But let's say that we assumed that the electric field pointed outwards. What would happen? Can we still solve the problem? So we say that our electric field, it's going to have some magnitude at a distance r, which is going to be the same no matter where we are on the sphere, times our little r hat vector. It's always pointing outward. And so our electric flux E dotted with dA, because they're pointing in the same direction, r hat dot r hat is just one, or they're pointing in the same direction, so the dot product is just the multiplication of the magnitudes. So this is just E of r times dA. And so when we integrate that over the surface A, because this electric field is constant at some distance r, I can pull it out of the integral. So E of R times the integral of dA. And this is my absolute favorite kind of integral because adding up all of the little pieces of area on this sphere dA is just equal to the area of the sphere. So this is just equal to A, which is 4 pi times R squared. So this is our electric flux, phi E by sub e. Okay, now all that's left is for us to set things equal to each other. So we know that the charge enclosed is equal to minus q. So minus q over epsilon naught is equal to e as a function of r times 4 pi r squared. And if we solve for e, we get that e as a function of r is negative q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So this is interesting. Our electric field, its magnitude is actually negative, which if we turn this into a vector, 
that means that the electric field is pointing in the opposite direction. So we said that initially when we solved this problem, we said that E as a vector was equal to our magnitude E of R times R hat. If we plug in our magnitude that we just solved for, we get that it's equal to negative Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared times R hat. Or if we move the negative sign over here, times negative r hat. So the electric field indeed for a negative charge, as we expect, is pointing towards the charge. It's pointing in the negative direction. And this is what we would expect. So this is, this is good. But what if we do the problem the opposite way? So initially we assumed that the electric field was pointing outward. But what if we were being clever and we remembered that when I have a negative point charge, the electric field is going to point inwards. So if I have a charge minus Q, my electric field is pointing inwards. Could I still solve the problem using Gauss's law this way? Well, let's, let's give it a try. Well, just like before, our enclosed charge is equal to minus Q, because no matter how big I make this sphere that's my Gaussian surface that's surrounding the point charge, or no matter how small I make it, it's still going to capture the point charge. But now what is my electric flux? So remember the electric flux is just the integral of E dotted with dA over my Gaussian surface, so over this area of the sphere A. So if I assume that my electric field is pointing inwards, then that means that E as a function of R is just some unknown magnitude, which I'm trying to figure out, times minus R hat. So it's pointing in the minus R hat direction. And so E dotted with dA, because dA is pointing, and I'll, let's draw this in red, dA is pointing straight out of the sphere, while E is pointing in, their dot product should be negative. And you can get this by dotting r hat with r hat. So dA is just r hat times dA. Or you can say, well, they're pointing the opposite direction, so their dot product should be negative. So it's negative E as a function of r times dA. So now to find my flux, all I need to do is integrate both sides. The negative sign can come out and E which is a function of r, but r is constant along this sphere, can also get pulled out. So we've got negative e as a function of r times the integral of dA over my surface. And remember, this is the best kind of integral ever because this is just equal to a. Or because we have a sphere, this is four pi times r squared. So our answer is, for our flux is negative E of R times four pi R squared. Now you'll notice that this, is, that this has a different sign than we had for our flux beforehand. So before we solved, we got that it was E of R times four pi R squared. So what's, what's gonna happen next? Well, when we set these equal to each other, phi E is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught then we'll get that e or negative e as a function of r times four pi r squared is equal to my enclosed charge, which I said was minus q divided by epsilon naught. And so if I rearrange things, this, these two minus signs will cancel each other and I'll get that e as a function of r is q over, let's keep that in blue, Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared. Now this is the opposite answer again than we got before because there's a there was a minus sign here, but there isn't a minus sign here. But remember that I initially assumed that my electric field was pointing inwards. So E as a vector was my magnitude times minus R hat. 
So if I rearrange things, I get that this is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught times minus R hat. And I can put the minus sign wherever I please. So E as a vector is exactly the same as what it was previously. Oh, and there's an R squared down here. So E as a vector is the same. It's Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared pointing in the minus r hat direction. It's the same here, pointing in the minus r hat direction. So when you have negative charge, you can either assume it's pointing outwards, in which case you'll point up, you'll get, you'll pick up a, a negative sign, or you can assume that it's pointing inwards, in which case you'll always have the negative sign. So, or you can assume it's pointing inwards. And the important thing is that you get the same answer in both cases. So as long as you're careful to keep track of your signs, it doesn't matter which direction you assume the electric field is pointing, you'll get the correct direction in the end. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.